JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for January the 14th. I am Haralamos Pissuros, head of research here at JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute, constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar continued trading lower against all the other major currencies uh, yesterday and today in Asia. However, this time around the main gainers were the yen and the Swiss franc, while currencies that decked, the currencies that decked out the least, the least gains were the Aussie and the Canadian dollar. Now, despite a weaker dollar, the strengthening of the Japanese yen and the Swiss franc combined with the relative weakening of the risk-linked Aussie and Kiwi suggests that markets may have turned back to risk off at some point yesterday. Indeed, uh, turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that although the majority of European indices closed in positive territory, Wall Street tumbled with the tech-heavy Nasdaq losing the most. The negative appetite rolled over into the Asian session uh, today as well. Now, the main market driver was uh, once uh, again comments surrounding uh, the Fed's future course of action with regards to monetary policy. Yesterday, while testifying before the Senate Banking Committee on her nomination as, uh, vi as Fed Vice Chair, Governor Brainard said that uh, the Fed has projected several rate hikes over the course of the year and that they will be, they will be able to start doing so as soon as uh, their purchases are, uh, are terminated, referring to the quantitative easing tapering which is scheduled to end in, um, in March. Given her dovish views ahead of her nomination, very few participants may have been anticipating a more hoggish speech than the one Fed Chair Powell delivered on Tuesday. On top of that, in a separate event, Chicago Fed President Charles Evans said that the current projection of three hikes this year is a good opening bid, but added that it could be four if the data uh, don't improve quickly enough. Philadelphia Fed President Harker also talked about the March uh, liftoff after uh, San Francisco Fed President Mary Daly has done so on Wednesday. Yes, Fed Chair Powell also declared willingness, to, to, uh, willingness for tighter policy when he, when he testified on Tuesday, but he refrained from commenting on a specific timeline while he mentioned that officials uh, would need some time before agreeing on the process of balance sheet uh, reduction. That's why stocks edged uh, north in the aftermath and continued to do so the following day as well. This time, remarks were more hoggish, with several um, uh, with several policymakers uh, supporting a March hike and mentioning the prospect of uh, four hikes uh, by the end of the year. That's uh, why equities uh, slid. But why did the dollar uh, kept sliding instead of rebounding? To be honest, uh, this appears to be a mystery for us as well. Maybe because there were some key technical uh, breaks in the last couple of days of the US dollar against its major counterparts. For example, Euro USD exceeded, its, uh, exceeded the sideways range it had been trading within since November 26th, and then it emerged above the downside resistance line drawn from the high of, uh, of May 25th. It could also be that market participants are afraid that if rates rise too fast this year, they will probably slow down later. In any case, with Fed officials entering a blackout period uh, next week ahead of the January 25th and 26th uh, policy meeting, we believe that the dollar's faith will depend on economic data. Numbers pointing to stellar economic performance may eventually encourage, par encourage participants to start buying uh, greenbacks again. Now, as uh, for today's events, 
during the early European session, we already got the UK monthly GDP for November as well as the industrial and manufacturing production rates uh, for the same month. The GDP accelerated to 0.9% month over month from 0.2%. While both the industrial and manufacturing production rates increased by much more than anticipated. In our view, this adds some credence to market expectations over a rate hike by the Bank of England very soon and, um, and some more uh, throughout the year. In the US, ahead of uh, the opening bell, the earnings season kicks off with uh, quarter four results from several large banks, including JP Morgan. Uh, Citigroup and Wells Fargo. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the, week, to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock AM GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So, bye, have a great day, a greater weekend, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next week. JFT, just fair and direct.